important. So who cares? So, so they forgot to record a sale. So the, you know, they didn't take, get rid of the receivable. So their cash doesn't balance. Why does any of this really matter? So ultimately, all this accounting data, all these individual transactions become rolled up into the financial statements. Right? What financial statements? Can anyone name some of the financial statements? Income statement. Balance sheet. Statement of cash flows. Statement of retained earnings or statement of stockholders' equity. There are all these statements, right? What is that made up of? That's made up of transactions that are just accumulate, accumulate over time, right? And ultimately, the data is rolled into those financial statements. So if you don't make the right transaction, your financial statements will be wrong, okay? And I'm giving you a small $100 example, silly little thing in the store, but you, have a, you, know, you look at big companies, they have millions of transactions that are going on, you know, if you have a lot of errors, this could really mess up and materially misstate your financial statements. So again, still why does that matter? Because who cares who's looking at them, right? Right? Investors and creditors, external users of your financial statements are going to make decisions based on those financial statements, right? So we have, so investors might invest in stock. Creditors, can, an example of a creditor would be like a bank, right? You're a company, you want to go to the bank, you want to get a loan from that bank. If they see that you have a whole lot of debt out there and not a lot of assets, are they going to want to lend you money? No, and if they do lend you money, are they going to give you a, a favorable rate of interest? No, because they look at these things, they look at ratios. You can even take that down to an individual level, right, that you can maybe relate to. I can tell you, I went, recently I was thinking, you know, how to get a car, so I went to the bank and I, I was curious, you know, what, what, what can I get a car loan from from the bank? And they said to me, they want to understand, they, you know, they want to check my credit, all this kind of stuff. And they want to look, because they want to look at ratios, they want to look at my financials, they want to understand what kind of debt I have on, in my name, and they want to understand what kind of assets I have against that debt. And if I have more debt and not a lot of assets, they're going to charge me the same thing, a higher interest rate. So you can, you'll see this happening not just at a corporate level, but you can relate to that. It makes sense. Right? Why would a bank lend you money? So these financial statements give these creditors, banks and other creditors and investors, this kind of information to let them know whether to invest with you, whether or not um, to lend you money. And without having money, can a company succeed? No, this is how companies grow. They get investors to give them money. They get creditors to lend them money. Okay? Um, so... This is a very important point here. We have accounting rules. Do you guys know what the accounting rules that we follow are called? GAAP, GAAP right? We have our U.S. GAAP. Okay, and these rules tell us how to account for different transactions. But we have this sort of ethical dilemma here. Accounting rules can influence the decisions that we make as either internal or external users. So I, use, I say here, as an internal user, you may favor a rule that helps you to show higher expenses because what do higher expenses give you? Le lower, lower net income, which ultimately you pay taxes on that net income, right? So you have to make choices as an accountant. There's judgment involved. I may choose to um, sh do something that will give me higher expenses. I'll give you an example in a second where on the flip side of that, external users would see additional expenses, higher expenses, and say, I don't want to invest in that company, right? Because their bottom line is not as good as maybe a comparable company that made a different accounting choice. So I'll give you an example. <coughs> I think fixed assets is a very good example, right? So if you buy property, um, I'll, I'll tell you even, when I was, when I was um, working as a controller out in California, we, this, they, there was a purchase of property a very large property, I think it was 80 acres in the middle of LA, and on it there was land and there was building. What do you think was the most valuable thing, just intuitively, about, about that um, site, that 80 acre site? The land or the building? The land, for sure, right? But we had to use judgment in allocating between land and building, right? Now, what can depreciate? What can't depreciate? Right. So what would be more favorable for tax purposes? 
have allocate more to building of the purchase price, right? And we're going to get to this in our acquisition of assets, right? But this is a very real issue that many of you will have to deal with in your time when you are working in accounting. As an auditor, you'll have to evaluate the choices that are made, okay? And as a person working in a company, you have to make the choices and then support them, right? Because as a, as a person working internally for a company, I want to get as much allocated to building as I possibly can because that building is going to get depreciated, which is ultimately going to lower the tax liability for the company that I work for. Okay? So there's judgment calls that you have to make as accountants and you have to make sure you try to make the most ethical decisions, which again we're going to talk about later on. But the idea is, is that accounting is not so cut and dry. Right? You have rules and you have to make, use professional judgment in implementing those rules. Okay? Um, all right, so let's keep going here. So the fundamentals of accounting. So again, 